Good afternoon, Cardinals. I'm Megan Garcia. And I'm Marie Gonzalez. We hope this semester has been great for you so far. Recently, the Business Club hosted an event where students got advice from doctoral student Tom Dodder. Olivia Amarudis attended the event to ask him what he thought about achieving student success. Hey Cardinals, I'm in the library auditorium where Tom Daughter spoke to the business club and offered educational and inspirational advice. Here's more of what he had to offer. Well, I think every student should have uh, two to three five-year goals. What do I hope to achieve in five years? And I think they should tape it up on their mirror, put it in their Bible, wherever they're going to see it, but they need to have like three five-year goals. The president of the business club gave us his takeaway from the event. My favorite part of his presentation was about uh, compassion and empathy and emotional intelligence, being aware of how you feel as an individual and then how you interact within that emotional space with others. I think that um, was a huge takeaway for me. For more information about events like this, check out the UIW Business Club's Twitter account at UIWTX Business. I'm Olivia Almarudis reporting for UIW TV. Thank you, Olivia. Seems to be some good tips there. Now, if you're ready to tackle the workforce, UIW has got you covered. Career Services launched their resume workshop series, where they help students polish up their interview and resume skills. Olivia Amarudis looked in on what you need to know. Hey Cardinals, we're on Dubuis Lawn for Resumania, where college students are learning essential tips to building your resume and preparing for your professional career. Let's see what Career Services has to offer us. A lot of students don't really know that you should tailor your resume to the job that you're applying to. So I know that doesn't sound very fun and it sounds kind of tedious, but if you have an ongoing resume, so kind of a working resume that you have, um, pick and pull from it so it makes it a lot easier as you're applying to different jobs out there. That's have something that distinguishes you from other people. Um, more than a resume, also a portfolio to show people what you've done, not just um, the biographical characteristics like I got a degree on this this age, but also like accomplishments that you have, which can go on a resume too. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a major asset to any future uh, employee or candidate. If you have any further questions about today's event, make sure to visit Career Services in the AD building. I'm Olivia Almarudis reporting for UIW TV. Thank you, Olivia. Looks like a good way for students to get an advantage in today's job market. And looking into the future, Olivia Almarudis spoke with UIW's president, Dr. Agnesi, about how the university is working toward the needs of enrolled and incoming students. Hey Cardinals! Today, faculty, staff, and students met to hear Dr. Agnesi's State of the Union address. Here's a glimpse of what his vision is for the upcoming years. Well, the university will continue to be responsive to the needs of our present students and future students. So everything we do is with the student in mind. And to provide as many opportunities as possible for our students, which are very unique, very diverse, and really represent the heart of Texas. It starts with the faculty, with the administration, and with the staff. If we are welcoming, then everyone is welcoming. So we have to make sure that we always hire with mission in mind. Everything we do is based upon mission. So the campus in Irapuato, the campus in Mexico City, the campus in Heidelberg, all relate directly to the mission of the congregation and to the mission of the university. What message do you have for students during this academic year? I hope they get involved as much as possible in everything. If they like music, then also get involved in basketball. If they like basketball, also get involved in plays. I hope that everyone has a great experience at Incarnate Word. Everyone is successful here, challenged here, and becomes a better person through the incarnational experience. Cardinals have a lot to look forward to in the upcoming years at the University of the Incarnate Word. Many thanks to Dr. Agnesi for his encouraging words. I'm Olivia Almarudis reporting for UIW-TV. Thank you, Olivia. It's exciting to see all the changes UIW is incorporating locally and internationally. And moving on to global news, Lisette Lewis has more with headlines from around the world. A poll illustrated by the Quinnipiac University shows that Clinton is topping the Democratic field in Florida, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. 43% of registered Democrats back Clinton in Florida, compared to 19% for both Senator Bernie Sanders and Vice President Joe Biden. Clinton tops 40% in Ohio, 19 points ahead of Biden, and 21 in front of Sanders. But the race appears closer in Pennsylvania, with 36% of those surveyed favoring Clinton and 25% backing Biden. 
Biden is still contemplating whether to enter the presidential race. We are now learning about the final moments of last week's mass shooting at an Oregon community college. Nine people were killed when the gunman opened fire inside a building on the campus of Umpqua Community College. The shooter later turned the gun on himself. The prosecutor says two detectives arrived on campus just minutes after the first 911 call was made. Upsetting footage shot by a drone over Indonesia has been published by Greenpeace. You can see smoke billowing from forest fires burning on multiple locations of Indonesia. Greenpeace says, quote, Companies destroying forests and draining peatland have made Indonesia's landscape into a huge carbon bomb, and the drought has given it a thousand fuses, end quote. The fires have created a dangerous layer of smog over Singapore and Malaysia. This is Lisette Lewis reporting for UIW-TV. Thank you, Lisette. We'll be back with entertainment after these messages. Drownings are the number one cause of accidental death for young children. Simple safety steps are the best way to prevent these tragedies. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Designate an adult water watcher to watch kids in and around water. Save the phone calls and texts for when the kids are out of the water. Properly fence all pools with fences at least four feet high and with self-closing, self-latching gates. When above-ground pools aren't in use, remove the ladders. When pools aren't in use, cover them. Teach kids to stay away from drains. And if a child is missing, check the pool or spa first. Consider the steps you take, then add a few more. Because you never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does, simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit poolsafely.gov. Hello, Cardinals. I'm Mercedes Esquivel. And I'm Candace Garner. In September and October, Hispanic Heritage is celebrated. Different organizations have had various events in honor of the occasion. This month, in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, the Campus Activities Board put on their second annual La Feria event. That's right, Mercedes. In September, the Campus Activities Board put on their second annual Hispanic Heritage event, La Feria. Our own Leah Hill has more on the story. In celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, UIW Campus Activities Board is hosting a free event. La Feria was held on UIW Dubuis Lawn, where there was food, music, and fun had by all. Well, we do um, an annual event every year for Hispanic Heritage Month. It's usually a taco truck, but this year, because of the renovation of the new student center, the circle is not available for where we usually have it. And um, so we decided to move it to Dubuis Lawn and then maybe even make it amp it up and make it bigger and better than it was in the past years. Um, I just decided to come over here and check this out. You know, it's free food, so time to enjoy yourself. And, free food. Um, yeah, free food. Really good tacos for lunch. How are you liking them? I haven't gotten to taste them yet, but they're all different, so I'm excited to try them all. Well, we did this event because it's Hispanic Heritage Month, so we thought that, oh, it'd be cool to bring a taco truck around campus, have some authentic Hispanic food. Awesome. Are you going to show that has some burrero? Mmm. Very good. Well, Cardinals, as you can see, everybody here is having a wonderful time. For more information on this event or other Campus Activity Board events, be sure to visit their Facebook page or visit uiw.edu slash Campus Activities Board. Reporting for UIW-TV, my name is Leah Hill. Thank you, Leah. That event sure looked like fun. Besides, you can't pass up free food. This past week, the brothers of Omega Delta Phi fraternity performed their stroll showcase. As a new fraternity here on campus, the brothers of OD5 were able to give us some insight into some of the things they do. Lisette Lewis has more on the story. Hello Cardinals, this is Lisette Lewis with UIW-TV and today we are in the circle on campus observing Omega Delta Phi's first official stroke case at the university. Let's go take a look.
I'm a part of the Brotherhood of Omega Delta Phi Fraternity Incorporated, and uh, we stress on service, uh, but we also have the social aspect. So we're a service social fraternity, and basically we dedicate ourselves to our community. In this case, it's UIW. The showcase or the stroll, stroll off, um, basically we wanted to show our culture as a fraternity, which we do, um, it's more of our social aspect, the strolling. Well, this is our first time doing it. Um, we had a lot of things happening uh, we, since we were a founders class, and we needed a lot of help from the alumni. So when they came out to help us and we recruited for the first time, we were like, hey, there's, there's a lot more things that we can work on. But the recruitment process itself went, went successful. It was, uh, we tried to engage the freshmen, even though we are not allowed to because they have to have 12 hours. But we want to make, make them know that we're a little different than most fraternities because we're more of a service fraternity. Overall, the process itself and the recruitment was fantastic. And uh, basically, it unites the brothers to come together. And every that last show we did, pretty much every single brother Omega Delta Phi knows. Um, so it, it's a great way to show off our culture. Wow, that was very impressive. It was awesome to get an inside scoop from the vice president and president of this fraternity. This is Lisette Lewis with UIW TV signing off. You I W Incarnate Knights Incarnate Knights Floor Nine Eight Seven. Thank you, Lisette. Sounds like those guys had some energy. I agree. And speaking of energy, there sure was a lot of that at the San Antonio Music Awards hosted by the SA Current. That's right. Various artists had the chance to showcase their talents, and students from the San Antonio area were all in attendance for the show. UIW's Carissa Runhell has more on the event. Hey, I'm Carissa Runhell with UIW TV Entertainment. We're here on the St. Mary's Strip where the San Antonio Current is holding their San Antonio Music Awards. For the first time, we've been able to really get all of the venues in one central location and that's been awesome because it makes for like a really walkable, fun, accessible uh, showcase. It's a really nice spot and it feels like the heartbeat of San Antonio. The relationship between the college students and San Antonio Current would be that, uh, an outlet, right? To move beyond the bubble of what the university is. For a full list of the winners, check out the latest edition of The Current. And Cardinals, if you like food, fun, and live music, check out some of the places we visited on St. Mary's Strip. Reporting for UIW-TV, I'm Carissa Runghill. Thank you, Carissa. It looks like they had a good time out there. Well, Cardinals, that's all the events we have for you today. I'm Candice Garner. And I'm Mercedes Esquivel for UIW-TV. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A covenant that split the skies over Berlin. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A promise was made. A solemn oath that liberated Seoul. A sacred trust that defended Khaesan. A pact that dug in in Da Nang. A contract that weathered Tet. A promise was made. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. A bond that patrolled door to door in Fallujah. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. A promise we all must keep. DAV fights for all veterans and their families so they get the health care, financial benefits, and support they earned. If you're a veteran who needs help or you'd like to help us keep the promise, visit DAV.org. Next up, we lead to our first ever Spanish segment here at UIW TV. Here's Marco Carana with UIW TV en Español. Gracias, Marie. Uh, hola, Cardenales. Soy Marco Cadena y por primera vez en UIW TV les presentamos un segmento de noticias en Español. 
Empecemos con los deportes. Daniel Jenselson entrevistó a los jugadores de nuestro equipo de soccer varonil. El equipo de fútbol arrancó la temporada 2015 con el pie derecho. Hoy platicamos con algunos de los miembros para platicar de su éxito en esta temporada. Yo pienso que el, que el éxito que se debe en esta, en esta temporada fue el, el trabajo, empezando desde la, desde la cabeza, que, se viene, que viene, viene siendo el entrenador. Uh, nos preparamos uh, cada día para que los, para que los jugadores uh, entiendan el, el estilo de, de juego que queremos y lo puedan, y lo puedan transmitir en la en la cancha. Miguel Ojeda nos platicó de los dos juegos que tienen esta semana y su gran importancia para alcanzar la meta del equipo. Los dos partidos de, de esta semana son muy difíciles, pero sabemos que podemos ganar y de, que debemos ganar para, para seguir en la lucha para, para ganar la conferencia. El líder goleador Noah Keats se perdió la segunda mitad de la temporada el año pasado pero este año ha concretado sus oportunidades con ocho goles y ganando el jugador de la semana en la conferencia dos veces consecutiva. Sí, el, el año pasado en lo personal yo pienso que, que sí nos hizo falta, nos hizo falta porque es un, es un jugador que hace, que hace la diferencia en la cancha con, con, solamente con su, con su presencia y, y mete goles, eso ahora lo que, lo que está haciendo en esta temporada, está metiendo goles, está en el, está en el lugar preciso, que eso para un delantero es muy, muy bien. Los Cardenales están de visita esta semana jueves y domingo contra Missouri, Kansas City y Air Force. Su próximo juego en casa es el próximo jueves a las 7 de la noche aquí en Benson Stadium. Reportando para UIWTV, Daniel Janselson. Gracias, Daniel. Vamos ahora con Auris Calviño, quien nos trae las últimas noticias nacionales e internacionales. Nuevas encuestas muestran que Hillary Clinton lleva la delantera en la carrera presidencial demócrata en tres de los estados claves. Clinton encabeza la campaña demócrata en Florida, Ohio y Pensilvania. En Florida, 43% de los demócratas registrados apoyan a Clinton. Comparado con el 19% que tienen el senador Bernie Sanders y el vicepresidente Joe Biden. Clinton alcanzó el 40% en Ohio, 19 puntos por encima de Biden y 21 frente a Sanders. Pero la carrera está aún más reñida en Pensilvania, con 36% de los encuestados favoreciendo a Clinton y 25% apoyando a Biden. Biden aún está contemplando si entrará o no a la carrera presidencial. El abogado del condado de Douglas, distrito de Oregon, Rick Wessenberg, comunicó su agradecimiento a aquellos oficiales que sin considerar su propia seguridad salvaron la vida de cientos de personas con sus actos heroicos en el tiroteo de Oregon. Greenpeace publicó un reciente video tomado por un dron volando sobre Indonesia. El humo que están viendo en pantalla proviene de incendios forestales en las islas de Sumatra y Borneo. Greenpeace comenta en un comunicado que las empresas que destruyen bosques y drenan los suelos con turba han convertido el paisaje de Indonesia en una enorme bomba de carbono, y la sequía le ha dado mil fusibles. Los incendios han creado una peligrosa capa de smog sobre Singapur y Malasia. Reportando para UIWTV, soy Auris Calviño. Gracias, Auris. Esas son todas las noticias en español por hoy. Gracias, Michael. Be sure to stick around for sports and weather after these messages. This is the city where danger lurks. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. They prowl the streets alone and in packs, causing mayhem, destruction, and carnage. Warning, until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital deadwalkers. They're not looking out for you. Dude! Engage! A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected. Sorry. With strong, healthy bones.
Hey there, Cardinal fans, and welcome to UIW TV Sports. I'm Kelsey Johnson. And I'm Gabriella Shada. Today we'll be updating all of you on how our Cardinals have been doing on the field, in the pool, and on the court. The Cardinal football team is now 3-2 this season overall and 2-1 and in the Southland Conference after defeating the Northwestern State Demons this past Saturday at Benson Stadium. We turn to Olivia Amrudis who met with members of the team. Hey Cardinal fans, today I'm at Benson Stadium with the football team to get a few key players assessment of this year's season. Senior Titan Cole Wick talked about the team's strengths. I mean we've won as many games already as we did last year so I mean, that's obviously a big goal. You want to win more games every year than you did the year before. Mike Tavares talked about how the team needs to improve in order to attain success. Focus. We need to focus a lot more, you know, do attention to detail and just play our game, play our assignments. Quarterback Trent Britton told us what he looks forward to in the upcoming games. Oh, we came a long way, you know, from, from the first game. Uh, we came a long way and improved a, a ton, you know, and we still got a long ways to go. But we're on the right path, and, and I'm, I'm really excited for what, we're, what we can do. You know, we proved a lot this week, and we got to build on it and, and keep going with it. I feel like we really, really show showing that we're a better team than we were last year. We already tied the wins that we had last year, and we really striking a lot of fear in the other South, Southland Conference teams. They really thought they were going to beat us, but we probably really put some doubt in their minds. Make sure to come support the UIW football team as they meet their goals for this season. I'm Olivia Almerudas reporting for UIW TV. Go Cards! Thanks, Olivia. Be sure to catch our Cardinals this Saturday as they take on the Sam Houston Bearcats at 6 p.m. in Huntsville. In women's soccer, the team currently has a record of three wins, nine losses, and one draw overall. In conference games, they hold a record of one win, three losses, and one draw. Their next game will take the girls to the coast, where they will play against Texas A&M Corpus Christi at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Men's soccer fell short in a 2-1 loss against San Jose State this past weekend. The team is now 5-3 overall and 1-1 in the Southland Conference. Olivia Almarudis has more on the story. Hey Cardinal fans, today I'm at Benson Stadium with the men's soccer team to get their assessment of this season. Main goal is to win, to win conference. That's, that's the whole team's goal and that's my personal goal also. It's just a matter of keep our feet on the ground and, and keep fighting game to game like for what we want. I believe um, we need to take a game at a time. So, yes, we all have the same goal in mind of, of, of taking, of bringing that conference trophy here to San Antonio. Midfielder Noah Keats shared his goals with us. Uh, no, just uh, go ahead, uh, hopefully get a few wins and uh, push on and try and win the conference and uh, for me score a few more goals. Good well. luck to the men's soccer team as they're on the road this week. Make sure to come out October 15th for the homecoming game. I'm Olivia Almarudis reporting for UIW TV. Go Cards! Thank you Olivia. The team is away this week and will play UMKC tonight at 7 p.m. The volleyball team's current record in the Southland Conference is 1-3 with a 3-10 overall record this season. The women will face Sam Houston State today at 7 p.m. and Lamar University at Saturday at 2 p.m. You can see the ladies in action at the McDermott Convocation Center. And David Robinson hosted the UIW basketball sneak preview event this past Monday, where fans got to meet and greet the players and coaches. Olivia Almarudis was there for the big reveal. Hey Cardinal fans, today I'm at the Convocation Center with the men's and women's basketball team. Let's see how David Robinson is helping boost spirit for the 2015 season. I'm really proud to be a Cardinal and I want to support these kids. You know, obviously the university has poured into my life and I want to you know, bring as much light to what, what they're doing here. We've got a new athletic director who's really done a fantastic job and, um, and really just hopefully, hopefully bring some attention and, and help the program grow. Head coach Ken Burmeister talked about how it feels to have David Robinson supporting his program. Uh, tonight's uh, was a real nice evening for the players, men and women and all the athletes. And to have David Robinson here, who's one of the greatest players in the history of the NBA, not only to come in the afternoon and do commercials, but to stay and speak and then afterwards sign autographs and pose for pictures. Uh, 
his master's degree is from UIW, so to know that he's a graduate and gives us his uh, support is honored. Many thanks to David Robinson, along with coaches, players, and students as they came to support the men's and women's basketball team. I'm Olivia Almeridis reporting for UIW-TV. Go Cards! Thanks, Olivia. Both teams will tip off the season on November 13th. That is all the sports news we have for you today, Cardinal fans. I'm Gabriela Estrada. And I'm Kelsey Johnson. See you next time, and let's go Cardinals! Good afternoon there, Cardinals. I'm Stu Meteorologist Ruben Gonzalez with your forecast. A cool but yet humid start to the day. It's a little bit unusual for this fall time frame, but I do want to let you know big changes are coming up on the short-term forecast, when I, and I'll give that to you in a little bit. But first, let's take a look at outside our AT&T Science Hall sky cam in high definition. 84 degrees out there. It's, it's a very nice... Very nice temperature for around the noon time frame. Southeast winds coming in at nine miles per hour and dew point 68. So with the dew point 68, you'll definitely feel that on your skin. So if you feel that stickiness in the air, that's because of this um, higher than usual dew point for this time of year. Now looking around temperatures around the region. So again, 84 here in the metro area, 84 in New Braunfels, a little bit cooler out toward the hill country, 81 for you folks out of Kerrville, 84, um, there in Lakey, and then 85 over there in Del Rio, excuse me, 82 in Lakey, then 84 down toward Galeriso Springs right there. But again, as I was saying, the dew points are a little bit higher than usual for this time of year. Usually we're supposed to be a little bit drier because of the fall, we start to get cold fronts through the region. That's not the case for now. So 68 here in the metro area is a dew point and 64 right there in New Braunfels. But then as you go out toward the east right over there, 74 and 75 for you folks out of Quero. So it's a little bit more dry, I mean more humid out there. It's a little bit sticky and you can feel it on your skin. And uh, that's going to be the case for the next 40 hours. The reason for that stickiness in the air is because we do have a low pressure system right there right over the valley and then we also have another low pressure system right over there toward uh, right over Mexico. So with this counterclockwise flow going right over the low, um, right over the low pressure system, we're getting all this moisture from the Gulf pumping in into South Texas and basically the entire state too. But we do have a dry line out there which acts somewhat like a cold front, but it's main, the main use of the dry line is just to it's just like for a little instability in the atmosphere and to knock temperatures down a little bit to make them a little drier. But because of this dry line and then the, the moisture coming in, it's reacting together to form the perfect ingredients for rain and thunderstorms today over South Texas. Now, for your future casts, you saw um, before high pressure used to dominate this entire state right here. But, my, but because that high pressure has broken down finally and we have low pressure settling right over south of us, we're getting a lot of moisture coming in and then we'll be able to have some more cloud cover today and also some more rainfall here in South Texas. Now, for your forecast today, I expect temperatures to go all the way up to 88 degrees for this afternoon as the high. 40% chance of thunderstorms here in the region um, and especially here on campus, 40% chance here on campus about uh, southeast winds around 5 to 10 miles per hour, but before our nighttime lows went down to the mid to low 60s, this time because of increased moisture, higher dew points, our lows are still going to stay really mild, 71 degrees for your low tonight. Now as so we take a look at your week ahead, so Friday 87 as your high around 30% chance of, of uh, storms and um, rain showers in the area because of the leftover moisture, we'll still have that chance lingering around for the metro area. Saturday, we'll have a high of around 91 degrees, but because of the dry air that's settling in into the region, we'll, we'll see our lows go back into the, into the upper 60s. But then as you start your work week around Monday and Tuesday, we'll have nothing but abundant sunshine skies. 94 and 92 is your high temperatures there. It'll still be a little bit warm for, especially for October, but on Tuesday, expect a weak cold front to work through the region uh, that night, and we'll expect nighttime temperatures to reach down to 66 degrees. I'm student meteorologist Ruben Gonzalez. You're up to date with your forecast. Let's go Cardinals. Well, that's all your news for today, Cardinals. 
Thank you for joining us and please remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Megan Garcia. And I'm Marie Gonzalez. Have a good day, Cardinals.